Skills 2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Yeah. Um, I have a quick, quick question. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to um, your uh, project, mm -hmm. the one that you created for uh, the GSPM servers. Okay. It's not showing up on the core. What do I do? I right click and validate. Is that no, all I do? It's not on the core. It's it's you'll be having a separate folder the way you have the JDBC in Core Java. You have the similar kind of folder also in there. Okay, if uh, I go to my GIT and if I just expand these, if you see, we have already spoken about Core Java, JDBC, and you will be having something like Servlet Web Pro. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so for the easier access, I have dumped in a couple of uh, I mean, all the files uh, which we are going to discuss uh, under servlets, okay, so that uh, I don't waste my time in that. All right, so let's start up. Uh, uh, in yesterday's class, we basically spoke about the request and the response. And uh, there was a question, uh, let, let us start with the with one of the answers. Uh, there was a question in which, uh, uh, I think, Saroja, she asked me that, what is, what is the set content type? And usually you use a set content type as text HTML. Okay, so let us uh, first uh, check the uh, content type as text HTML, and then we'll go back to some of the content types also. Okay, so initially, very the very f uh, starting we saw this in picture. So there is a text HTML, and if you see this uh, servlet, basically this servlet is nothing but you have your hello form, and I have embedded the HTML tags inside the servlet itself okay so this is nothing but a uh, all your html tags because i want to show this page dynamically now just remember one thing and i keep on saying this if you want to uh, display your page in a dynamic way so you have to either use jsps or servlets okay you cannot use html okay now here uh, we have um let's say let's take this the hello.html wherein we have seen this instead i just get change the name out here it is the first underscore name and the last underscore name okay so you have the first name and the last name the moment you submit what happens it goes to your uh, servlet that is your hello form you have this out here as hello form and uh, you it comes here and it's, it sets a content type what is a content type i'm i just want to print it to the output and ultimately let me even comment this out Okay. Ultimately, what happens? Uh, you basically print something to the output and something gets displayed, right? So the output basically gets displayed to the browser here. So if I just run this application, okay. So just refresh this. I'll just keep my name out here and do a submit, okay. All right, so there is a problem out here. I just need to do figure out a couple of other things. Okay. We'll talk about all these things later. Okay, so it started now. So go back to the browser and uh, just do a submit out here. So when you do a submit, what happens? You get the response back and with some data also here. Now, 
you you know that whenever you you try to access any html you will not get the html tags if i just say right click and view page source this is nothing but your html tags right you do not see the html tags instead what this browser does is it basically renders and compiles this particular html and it knows how to show the content of your html okay that's what it shows out here okay but ultimately if you see your servlet program out here you are basically writing all this piece of code here okay which is not visible to your eyes unless until you say a page view source now uh, here as i have given the response.set content type as text html so it is giving me in the form of your text html okay so i there are different content types i can even say text plain also so what happens if i say text plain so let me again uh, compile this save this build it so waiting for the restart okay is restarted here so go back and again the same page the starting hello.html page i'm going to submit this right now so the moment I submit it right now, what am I getting is I am basically getting the entire HTML tags which is being generated from your servlet itself. That means you are saying that the output which you are going to send it to the output, I mean the output which you are going to send is in the form of your plain text. Okay. I can even send it in any of the format. There are a lot of bunch of formats actually. If you, uh, let us do one thing. Let me have this out here. Okay. So if you, if I go to this particular website, it has got a lot of uh, content types, whatever you can choose. Okay. So if I go back, scroll down, uh, there are a lot of other content types. So from here, we basically use text slash HTML. Okay. And if you want to say uh, application slash MS Word. Okay. So if you give this, all the contents will be saved in the form of your MS Word. Okay. So if let us uh, for quickly let's just use this so i have got response.set content type uh, my contents are all same okay i'm not changing it anything i'm just uh, changing the content type out here all right so let me just comment this out and uncomment this compile it okay so go back to the browser refresh this i want to refresh also I do a submit so the moment i do a submit if you see something is getting downloaded here right so hello form something is getting downloaded out here so if i just go to your uh, uh, let's say i'll just click on this it will give you an option to open that you can just choose your ms word all right and you can see the entire content which is actually which is supposed to be printed to the output or to the browser it has been stored in the form of your ms word okay so the content type with the help of the content type you can specify what kind of output you want to give it to the user okay all right so the yeah i'm just looking for uh, the the word microsoft word on your desktop or on your browser no, no it'll be on your desktop it'll save it in the in in your local system okay all right, so let's move ahead and uh, we'll talk about a couple of other options today. We'll talk about filters today. Okay, we'll talk about exceptions also, how to handle exceptions. All right. Now, uh, what happens basically till date what we have seen MS Paint. Uh, till now what we have seen, this is your uh, browser and this is your actual server. Okay, your request basically comes from your browser to your server. Okay, and ultimately you get a response back all right now what happens is uh, uh, i want to do some kind of filtering saying that now see server is all common now you might be having multiple browsers and uh, anyone can access your particular uh, server okay but what i want to do is i want to have some kind of filters in between your uh, when even before coming to your uh, to your actual page now when i say actual page out here now here when you say hello.html and you give hello form now what is which particular servlet is going to take your uh, take your request who th th there is nothing but your hello form here okay so the request let's say the request directly come from your uh, html page to your hello form somewhere which is present in your server itself okay so request comes up out here 
But even before even getting into it, I want to basically add a filter in between saying that I want to do some logging mechanism. I want to uh, do some checks. Let's say I want to do even do, uh, let's say if, if you have a user ID and password, you are entering a user ID and password and you're checking whether your user ID and password doesn't match us. You can basically stop that request. Now, when I say request, the request is this request, which goes to your actual servlet. So this, this request I will stop in order to uh, go into this. Instead, I will first come to this filter. This filter is going to, if everything was fine, this filter is going to uh, send your request to your actual servlet. Okay. So here in this case, uh, we have added a couple of filters. Now let us talk about authentication filter here. Now, if you see authentication filter, it is, uh, as it is a filter, you have to implement that to a filter. Okay. So it is again an interface out here. All right. Now, as you know, uh, for a servlet, it has got its own life cycle. Now, even your filter has got its own life cycles also. Okay. It has got its destroy method. It has got its init method and it has got its, let's say this is a service method. So this is the method, which is going to take up all the requests first. And if everything goes fine, it is going to do a chain dot do filter. Now, if you see the do filter is going to take uh, three parameters. One is your request response and chain. Now chaining means what? If everything goes fine, if, if this, the request, which is coming to the filter, if everything is fine, your validation is done, then it sends the request back to your actual servlet. Okay. If anything goes wrong, I want to uh, give a, give some other response back to the user. Okay. So that is what uh, is present out here. Uh, if you see here, uh, I'm saying here if, okay. Okay. So first let's see what is a filter out here. And, uh, the, the first time the request comes up and you are just checking the IP address out here. Okay. And just checking what is the IP address and just printing it out here. And at last I'm just doing a chain dot do filter. Okay. So let us clear this up and let me access this. So when I do a submit out here, even before that, let me go back to the servlet and just change the content type to text HTML. Okay. Now, now if you uh, guys, if you can see here, everything, all the, all the HTML tags are present out here. Okay. I mean, you can do anything. You can even embed a JavaScript also. So JavaScript ultimately goes back to your browser. Okay. Now come to the filter and what did I uh, do here? I'm just uh, printing the IP address of, of this particular system. So how do I get the IP address? I just say request dot get remote address. Now why it is remote address? Because let's say you are accessing my system or accessing my server. So in that case, I'm going to, I want to get your IP address. Okay. As it is uh, request. Now you will ask me this server is running in your, in your own system, but actually in real time, the server will be running somewhere in, uh, in, in, in globally. So you can access your server from anywhere. Okay. So that is what the actual use of it. Okay. Now here, uh, the very first time you start your server, the first time, if you see your uh, authentication filter is getting invoked. Okay. That means it, it uh, says that test para in authentication filter, right? I mean, your init method gets invoked automatically whenever you start your server. Okay. Now go back to the browser here and I do a submit. So the moment I do a submit, let us go back to the console uh, and see what it is. Now, the very first thing is it goes to your authentication filter. Now that's what you have it. The authentication filter as do filter out here. Okay. So we are somewhere here. Okay. And we printed this one. We printed this one and then uh, you printed your IP address out here after that. Okay. I just restarted again. I did some save here. Let me just clear this up, go back and submit it again. Okay. So when you submit first, it comes to the filter. Okay. And now as I have got two filters out here, one is your authentication filter and your uh, log filter, both are getting executed because filters I've given a filter out uh, to there are two filters. One is a log filter and the other one is an authentication filter. I can even give a URL pattern on which particular URL pattern my filter is supposed to get invoked. Now, as I've given here a star, so for every request, my login filter is going to get invoked. And for every request, my authentication filter is going to invoke because I've given the URL pattern as star out here. If you want to be more specific, you want to say only the uh, URL, which is having something like uh, hello star. Okay. That means any package, 
any uh, URL pattern which is having a, a, a structure as hello and then star hello slash and star, then at that point of time, your authentication filter is going to get invoked. But here in this case, I want to say that my authentication filter want to get me to be invoked for each and every request in this particular server. Okay. So once go back again. Um, Dharam, I have a quick question here. Yeah. Uh, when you say that uh, only uh, when you say hello, mm -hmm. then it will be uh, the the this filter will be executed only for uh, those servlet names which have hello in it's it. It's not the servlet names. If you see, I can say here as uh, web servlet web pro slash hello slash. So for that case, I have to create a folder out here, right? Somewhere in this, I will be creating a folder, new folder. And let's say this is my, let's say tax. Okay. So I, in, in my tax, I have got a page as hello. Correct. Okay. Correct. So Correct. how do you access? Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Okay. I got it where we give the URL pattern. Mm. Uh, I got it. My question is that mm -hmm. uh, for each and every URL pattern, mm -hmm. this uh, both the filters will be executed? As of now, because I've given a star here. Okay. Okay. But let's so say you whatever we do, mm -hmm. whatever we do, uh, it will be executed like. Whatever so you do. Give it only once. Yeah, I mean, this will be given only once. We, yeah, this will be given once, but the the filters will run every time. Right? Every time it is going to run. Okay. Okay. Because see, okay. my purpose purpose is that because when I talk about authentication filter, whoever is accessing my server, they has they have to go to go through a filter process. For that reason, I'm just giving it as a star here. Okay. You can even have your own URL pattern. Let's say you are having something like uh, tax tax filter now. You, your application has got a tax application. Your 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 uh, server has got, uh, let's say, sports application. Now, whenever anyone is interested in tax, some they have to go through a filter process. Okay, so I'll define a specific tax filter process for your tax, and I'll just give it give here as tax slash. So whoever the who any of the URL which comes with this particular pattern, they will hit your tax pattern. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Right. All right. So, yeah. So usually what happens here, uh, the request comes up uh, over here and if everything goes fine, it does a chain dot do filter, right? So what I can do here is I can just put some if and else condition and let's see what am I going to do here is I'm just saying if your URI does not ends with, so I'll, I'll take this URI and I'll just say log dot info and you are a name equals to URI. All right. So it's going to restart again. All right. So go back to the browser and let us do a submit out here. Okay. I did a submit out here. And ultimately, it is giving a uh, error status as 500. Uh, the reason, let us see what is the reason out here. Now, if you see, there is a reason code out here is 500. Okay, we'll talk about those reason codes also. Uh, response has been committed. Okay, sorry. So, in this case, I have to comment this out. So what am I doing here is even though, okay, let me do one thing here. Let me go back to it. I just say here, hello.html. Okay. So I'm saying that if the URA does not start with HTML, then go to hello.html. What am I, what did I do? I did some kind of filtering here. Okay. So when you say on the response, if you see here, this is your response object in your uh, subreddit chaining. Okay. Sorry. In your uh, filter, you have got your request response and chain here. So from your response, I'm basically uh, converting, uh, casting that to your HTTP server response. And here I'm just saying response.send redirect. So when you say response.send redirect, what happens is the, the, the flow breaks basically does not go to the actual server. Instead, it breaks from here and it goes to your hello.html itself here. Okay. So it is something like this out here. So 
new don't save you have this out here and uh, this is your server and you know that your uh, request this is your request it goes to a, a particular servlet okay so before you even get going to a servlet you are having one more filter okay and if anything goes wrong with this filter what this filter is going to do is there is even an html file this is my html file and this is my servlet okay so filter will basically take this html file and give a response back to you instead in our previous cases it the request used to come to this particular servlet and the, this servlet is only used to give the response back to us okay but here in this case we are having a filter and that filter is going to filter out something okay and due to some reason it is going to give this page as a response to you okay so let us go back here and see that i'm just saying uri dot ends with html okay so right click clear go back to the browser share on route and do a submit all right now okay go back to here all right now if you see here uh, what is what is my actual uri out here my actual uri is nothing but a hello form right so it does not even ends with html or it, it does not even ends with your login servlet correct if you see here my actual url is nothing but uri is nothing but your hello form here okay so that's what i'm kind, uh, kind of doing a filter out here even you can do a username and password validation here you can hit the database okay you can get the username and password here in your login filter sorry in your authentication filter here you can uh, access your database once you access your database you do some validation if the validation doesn't comes up even you do not take up the responsibility to throw i mean give the response to your hello form okay before that you're doing something and it is redirecting it to a, another page now here in this case my another page is nothing but your hello.html itself okay so it is redirecting it to the hello.html itself okay so this is one objective for a filter wherein you basically do a filtering of your particular request which is coming to your server okay the other uh, filtering what you can do is you can basically log each and every request which is coming up to uh, this is the same filter again the name is only a log filter out here every time each and every time you send a request what happens you are taking the ip address and you are basically you can save this ip address in a particular log file also okay so here what i can do uh, so just copy this i can okay instead of copying this uh, okay i'll do one thing i'll just push it out here okay and every time i want to log the ip address information to a particular log file which is present in the server itself so let me just copy and paste it out here All right so as you know every time it comes here it uh, does uh, some filtering or you can uh, use this so let us go back and see what is going to happen here uh, again the same thing i just do a submit instead of doing anything out here and let me go back to my log file now where do you see the log file if you are running it on in your eclipse your log file will be somewhere present in your working directory so that is what uh, i'm running uh, my project is somewhere in my work space h2k okay so if i just go here uh, this is my workspace uh, h2k under that you will be having metadata okay i'll just copy this and paste it to you guys so you can just have it this is a question out here why do some methods have a web filter and others that use a filter like do filter does not use that annotation so okay all right so here as you know as you when you talk about uh, filters you will annotate this sorry i just missed this out you just say that this is your web filter okay so you have to annotate that particular filter as your web filter as well okay if you see your servlet apart from your servlet extending your http servlet you just annotate with your web servlet but here in this case you need to say that it is your web filter out here all right okay i pinged you the uh, the 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 location of uh, the log file wherein you can find it okay so in your eclipse what happens is if you go to your this directory the the directory which i pinged you under that you will be having temp0 or temp1 depending on uh 
yeah it basically creates temp0 temp1 okay so you just go inside that inside that only you will be basically having your web applications so under that you will be having 